All right, y'all, welcome back. This is Mr. Anderson. It's been a minute since I did a video, at least a month, I think. But today what I have for you is the Jesuits and that old serpent, right? Serpent is a common theme when you're talking about cults specifically who use the occult, right? And we're going to get right on into the Jesuits. I'm not going to make this about the different rabbit holes like the Hegelian dialectic and how the Reformation and Counter-Reformation was all controlled opposition at some point and blah, 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 blah. I'm not getting into all that. It would end up being a 10 hour video. So I'm gonna try to keep it straight to the point, the origins of this Jesuit occult serpent basically, right? So you've got the Counter-Reformation, uh, sorry, Council of Trent, which is part of the Counter-Reformation, right? 1545 to 1563 or so, and you got cardinals coming together to try to reassert Catholic authority, basically, right? And which is basically the power structure that came from Rome. And again, I'm not going to get into that rabbit hole. So basically, you've got the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits or IHS, whatever you want to call it, being formed, right? So back to the base, back to the origins and the founder, which is obviously Ignatius of Loyola, right? Who was born in Spain and uh, he wanted to be a military commander and leader, a prolific military man is what he wanted to be, right? Until he got blasted in his knee by a cannonball and ended his career, right? So then he's sitting up in the hospital reading about these Catholic saints and particularly He's reading about St. Francis of Assisi, which is a whole nother story, right? A monumental occult figure, basically. A so-called ascended master, ascended master in the world of theo or theosophy, sorry. So if you watch my school presentation, I have to go in on St. Francis of Assisi to even comprehend how our school system's set up. So basically, he wants to be just like this St. Francis of Assisi, right? And as far as Jesus is concerned, he's not Jesus concerned, but as far as he's concerned about Jesus is he's a military commander and to use in order to conquer the world, basically, right? Militaristic minded dude, obviously. Okay. So, but who he's really worshiping and dedicating himself to, he went to the mountaintop of Montserrat where they have an, a goddess idol of Asherah, right? And they call it the Black Virgin of Montserrat. And basically, he prays to this thing for three days straight and dedicates his entire work and life's mission to her, to this deity, right? And if you've seen any of my presentations, I briefly touch on these deities, Asherah, Astarte, which is essentially the same thing as the Catholic Mary, um, the same thing as Semiramis, Isis, it's an archetype, right? It's an allegorical deity, which of course is how ancient religion works, is allegory, right? So, keeping on point, at this point, he supposedly wants to go conquer Muslims, but he gets stuck because of the plague in Barcelona, and now he's in Manresa, right? So, this is where it gets, this is the key information right here. In Manresa is where he goes into this cave and lives in the cave, right, which is a common occult theme, going into some sort of cave or underground and emerging from dark to light, right? So he's in this cave, and he's basically torturing himself physically and mentally, and to the point to where he sees this beautiful serpent, right? And this serpent bestows knowledge and wisdom upon him, okay? So he spent 10 months in this cave doing this, right? And which is obviously this dude's crazy, okay? This is, this is a classic psychopath right out the gate, you can already tell. And you've got classic cult origin stories and um, legend and all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, mythical background is the word I wanted to use. There's always some sort of mythical background when you're starting some cult. You can't just randomly start a cult. You got to come up. You either got to make this stupid sh shite up 
or you gotta actually go into a cave and torture yourself for 10 months, which maybe he did, all right? We're talking about a crazy person here. So basically, now he comes out, he emerges out of this cave from darkness to light, and he goes to the Franciscan monks, Order of St. Francis, right? Whole another rabbit hole. And approaches them with this information he got from this serpent. And they say, well, we don't want no political trouble or nothing. You should probably go home with all that, right? So then what he does is he goes into the universities and gets formally trained in theology. And he networks with people, right? And he starts to build a little cult following, basically, of these different students. And he starts doing like sorcery and little magic rituals in closed behind closed doors and whatnot right and this is where he starts to gain his ground gain his traction okay you could you could speculate that this is where he started neck uh, networking with powerful people and i that's what i would say um that fits a lot more with reality than a lot of the official versions okay so basically he's now doing these little rituals with these people and he gets eventually locked up and thrown in jail a couple times for being so-called albrado or illuminati right alambrados okay so basically i got a couple things here a couple of exhibits right that i'm gonna read off here so basically that brings me to exhibit a okay so this is a quote straight out of the encyclopedia britannica 11th edition Volume 14, 1911. This is the 1911 Britannica, which is probably the most famous Britannica and the most expensive, right? There's nice versions, or sorry, nice copies, nice condition copies of this that are like five grand, right? I knew this old dude who sold only rare books out of his house and turned his house into a rare book library, and he had a whole set of this. So he let me record it and take pictures of it. And of course, I jumped straight to things like Illuminati. This is years ago, but it's relevant right now for this video. Exhibit A, quote, Illuminati, a day, and this isn't gonna be an Illuminati video. I already did that, but this is relevant, all right? Quote, Illuminati, a designation in use from the 15th century and applied to or assumed by enthusiasts of types of types distinct from each other according as the light claimed due to a clarified and exalted condition of the human intelligence. Luciferianism, straight up. It's, it's the light, the light bearers, the special boys who have the knowledge and everybody else sucks, right? Back to this quote. To the former class belong the Alambrados of Spain. Menendez Pelayo, first finds the name about 1492 in the form Illuminados, 1498, but traces them back to a Gnostic origin and thinks their views were promoted in Spain through influences from Italy. One of the earliest leaders born in Salamanca, a laborer's daughter known as La Beta de Parita, I don't know how to pronounce it, came under the notice of the Inquisition in 1511. As claiming to hold the colloquies of the Lord and the Virgin, having high patrons, no decision was taken against her. Los Heterodoxos Españoles, 1881. Ignatius Loyola, while studying at Salamanca, was brought before an ecclesiastical commission on charge of sympathy with the Alambrados, afforded many victims to the Inquisition, especially Cordova. Now, I have like 12 different old encyclopedias and quotes that I've dug up myself in old dusty libraries and used bookstores on the Illuminati. And many of them go in on Ignatius Loyola being the Alambrado or even the leader of the Spanish Illuminati, essentially, right? So to all those lame weirdos who say things, like, oh, the Illuminati, huh? you think, huh? you see a Dorito and a triangle, huh? those weirdos like that, this is in the most famous Britannica, right? So there is something called the Illuminati and they even speak about how there's different groups and it's basically the light claimed due to a clarified and exalted condition of human intelligence. Watch my Illuminati video and that's exactly what I say in there. 
it's it's the it's Lucifer is the bringer of the light, right? In their minds, that's the good guy. That's the one who gave intellect to human beings, or at least precipitated it, right? So going back to what I was talking about, uh, sorry, <clears throat> you've got 15, okay, 34, Loyola. Again, he's got his little followers. So he takes six of his followers, his most trusted high level um, followers in his little cult, and establishes the military brotherhood, the Society of Jesus, or what we would call the Jesuits. I don't think they call themselves Jesuits, then, if ever. But what we call the Jesuits is the Society of Jesus. It's a military brotherhood. So you've got six guys doing it. August 15th, 1534, in a crypt at the Our Lady of the Martyr Church, right? In a crypt. So you've got classic cult behavior here, and that's where they did their lifelong solemn vows, right? And they make him Ignatius the superior general of the order, of course, right? So this is this almost brings me to Exhibit B, where him and his followers go into Rome, right? And not only get is Pope Paul III, not only get acknowledged by him, but he gives them extreme levels of power. So we're supposed to believe that this dude just randomly makes a cult and, with, and then marches into Rome and gets ex top level privilege, right, in, in society by the Pope. It's borderline to insane, borderline insane to think that the Pope and the Catholic Church didn't have anything to do with fomenting this organization of his brotherhood. I mean... What a coincidence that they just happen to be wanting to have a military brotherhood to reassert Catholic power, and in comes, magically, the, coincidentally, this dude who made just that. So obviously there's some things we're not being told. Common sense dictates that. Just like always, right? So that brings me to Exhibit B. So basically, this is the power he gave them. To excommunicate all who would hinder or not aid to their story. To confer others, preach and administer the sacraments. To change their general. To absolve heretics. To imprison the excommunicate. To exercise Episcopal functions. Excuse me. To confirm, exercise, dispense, etc. To distinguish themselves. To carry movable altars. Why do you need to carry move, movable altars? These... They can basically set up shop with the power of the church anywhere they go, right? To give plenary indulgences, to live exempt and free from secular powers. That's monumental. That'd be like living in America and the police department, the IRS, nothing applies to you, right? Talk about privilege. This is what people are mistaking as privilege now, which it does exist, but it's not so-called what they... The nonsense that they're calling it, right? I got to try not to get sidetracked with all that nonsense that's going on right now, okay? And to be totally tax-free, there it is. To be free from any jurisdiction, authority, sentence, or command of any other no ordinary delegate, judge, magistrate, or from any search. So you can't even get a warrant on these people, Right? You switch that. That's insane. That's an insane level of power, obviously. So these people, again, it's naive to think that the Catholic Church had nothing to do with the formation of this Society of Jesus. In my opinion, my just the way I describe it, it's basically like the CIA slash military for the Catholic Church, right? So there's no coincidences there. So you basically have now what he's developing called um, spiritual exercises, right? And basically, he created a template for indoctrination for his cult members that was right on par with what he did in that cave for 10 months in order to see this serpent, right? And that becomes the foundation of these Jesuits. 
is going through what they call the spiritual exercises. And that, that's what brings me to Exhibit C. Spiritual exercises. Systematic meditation and prayer. Contemplation and visualization. Illumination, which would lead to an ecstasy state. Followers were known to levitate off the floor. I call BS on that, but let's keep it going. <laughs> Initiation took 30 days and they were brought with a supervisor telling them exactly what to think, feel, breathe until they were broken like a horse, right? They controlled some, they controlled breathing with recording and writing it down and basically machinized, machined the human. And they said it would take, quote, 30 days to break somebody. So these people believed they could break anybody in 30 days, right? And they basically hacked the human mind. This is high level cult right here. This is like very efficient, high level sh stuff right here, right? So further training involves sacrificing the personal will entirely. They were allowed to sin in the name of Jesus. They maintained a no responsibility philosophy, right? Maintained an ends justifies the means philosophy. Classic mystery school stuff right there. Classic cult stuff, right? That's always going to be a thread in it. Always. That's probably the number one thread. They had what they called 1% probabilism. And they had directing the intention, which is changing your focus during deeds, right? So basically, you could be harming a child... And in your mind, already have it geared to what to focus on instead of that. It's, it ends justifies the means. So you're like, I'm actually saving somebody else's life by doing this. So you, it, they called it um, directing the attention, intention. They're hacking the human mind. Because the average person has a conscience. They're hacking their mind and removing the conscience. Literally. Like... And they had what they called uh, equivocation, mental reservation, and what they called secret doctrines with um, secret um, doctrines with fake public meanings. That's straight up esoteric versus ex exoteric. You tell the public one set of concepts, and when really you're practicing something hidden or esoteric on the inside. This is a classic mystery school, you guys. Straight up, there's no defense of it. There's no way to say it's something else for me personally, based on, and I've done a lot more research on this. I'm just trying to keep it straight to the point and give you the origins of this occult serpent called the Jesuits, right? That old serpent, cult serpent, basically, right? Because occult means hidden in simple terms, right? So let me go through a couple more exhibits and then continue on. So here's a quote from John Latour's multi-biography, quote, In the form, in the air near him, and this form gave him much consolation, because it was exceedingly beautiful, and somehow it seemed to have the shape of a serpent, and had many things that shone like eyes. He received much delight and consolation from gazing upon this object. But when the object vanished, he became disconsolate. End quote. Then quote from the same multi-biography. While Loyola preached, one fell senseless. Another sometimes rolled about on the ground. Another had been seen in the grip of convulsions or shuddering and sweating in anguish. End quote. So that's, again, sounds like possession to me. Right? Now this is from Le Jesuits by H. Bomer. However you say it, right? Quote. We imbue unto him spiritual forces he would surely find difficult to eliminate later. These forces can come up again to the surface, sometimes after years of not mentioning them, and become so imperative that the will finds itself unable to oppose any obstacle and has to follow their irresistible insult, or sorry, impulse, end quote. So as you can see, they're hacking the human mind. That's Manchurian candidate type stuff right there. Straight up. And of course, the Boston College website. Because Boston is where these Jesuits set up in America. Straight up. Quote, when in, eight, when in 1547, Ignatius was asked to open a school in Sicily for young men who were not 
the Jesuits, he seemed to have this opportunity as a powerful means of forming the mind and soul to bring people to God. He sought to form those who would turn or who in turn would form or influence others. And again, classic cult behavior, classic mystery school. You train cult leaders, essentially, right? It's like a pyramid scheme. Okay. So now I'll do my final exhibit here. Basically, and you've probably heard this before, and it's the Jesuit Oath, the original Jesuit Oath, which is vicious, and it lets you know a lot of what we're dealing with here. Quote, I promise that, and I declare that, I will, when the opportunity presents, make and wage relentless war, secretly or openly, against all Protestants and liberals as I'm directed to do, to extirpate and exterminate them from the face of the whole earth, and that I will spare neither age, sex, or condition, and that I will hang, burn, waste, boil, flay, strangle, and bury alive these infamous heretics, rip up the stomachs and wombs of their women, and crush their infants' heads against the walls in order to annihilate forever their execrable race. That when the same cannot be done openly, I will secretly use the poison cup, the strangulating cord, the steel of the poniard, or the leaden bullet, regardless of their rank, or sorry, regardless of the honor, rank, dignity, or authority of the person or persons, whatever may be their condition in life, either public or private, as I at any time may be directed to do so by any agent of the Pope or superior of the Brotherhood of the Holy Faith, the Society of Jesus. So basically, <clears throat> Excuse me. You got these people who are ready and willing to to do what their master wants them to do. This to me, I said this somewhere. This to me is one of the top, maybe at least the second most brainwashed and vicious cult of all time. I would say the assassins were number one because with the assassins. Um, people like Saladin and all those people, they could snap their fingers and, and they would die to their death instantly because they thought they were going to go see virgins. And that's a whole nother story. The Hashishans, they would use hash in the initi initiation ceremony, bring them to a uh, so-called heaven with these chicks running around and milk and honey and blah, blah. Those dudes were high level. But these people really mastered hacking the human mind. They really did. You could argue... For me, it's top two. Hashishans and these Jesuits are no joke. And we still got these Jesuits to this day. Don't don't trip, because when I finish up here, it'll sound like the end, but obviously it's not the end. I'm still sticking to the origins of this, right? It might sound like the end, but it's the origins. So anyway, I got to keep it going. These Jesuits started setting up in more th their colleges, right? Another way to establish impetus for power, okay? They set up these colleges in more than just Europe. So now you got Prague, you got what's now called the Czech Republic, right? You've got, let's see, Boston in the United States. You got the, I don't know how to say it, but Zacatecas, Zacatecas or whatever in Mexico, right? As a hub. And you've got Avignon, France. You've got Salamanca in Spain. You got Graz in Austria, you even have China, right? So after they set up these colleges, now it's 1568, and they want to infiltrate, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> they want to infiltrate, they basically want to send disinformation agents, right, and agent provocateurs into the Church of England. So they start dressing, up, dressing these Jesuits up as Church of England ministers, right? And in one case, the dude actually dropped his little booklet that shows how to undermine the Church of England. And they found it. And they raided his little locker and area and stuff. And they found in his boot a Jesuit license and what they call a vote from Pope Pyrrhus. Giving him the authority to sabotage and to cause dissension and division in the Church of England. Right? These methods have been going on for a long time. You got agents, double agents, all this stuff, right? Classic mystery school cult stuff. You have to have, I'm gonna try my best not to say any details about the current 
nonsense that's going on. But you have to have, when you've got riots in 30 something cities, that's a mystery school that set that up. It's, it sounds sad, but people just don't rebel like that. You have to have organization. You have to have a cult to do that. You need a secret society to do that, right? So it's the same thing with this. You need a secret society to cause this division in this Church of England, right? So basically, now you've got Jesuits planning to kill Elizabeth I, and then you had the 1588 Spanish Armada, which is an example of that, right? And they failed, though. So after she dies, you got James the Sixth, right? Which is a whole nother rabbit hole I'm not getting into. But basically, they tried to blow up the House of Pearl Alignment in 1605, right? They call it the gunpowder, the November 5th gunpowder plot led by Guy Fawkes, which is celebrated every year in Britain, right? So 1618, or sorry, before I go to 1618, now that they've taken over places like Spain and Portugal and Austria and stuff, right? They turn their attention to Germany, which is the birthplace of the Reformation, right? And now they're going for Germany. And by 1618, now they've got influence on these leaders in Germany and they launch a vicious campaign against Christians, right? And it was very vicious, right? So now um, you've got them taking over Germany, right? And they assassinate King Henry III and King Henry IV, okay? And this is when they put that I-N-R-I, those initials, right? Which is supposedly because of what was put on Jesus's cross, which typically when you see that, it's a Jesuit artwork. Doesn't mean that you're a Jesuit if you have that in your house, I'm just saying. The I-N-R-I, which is supposedly Jesus of meant for Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, but for them, what it really meant was it is just to annihilate impious rulers. These are the king killers, right? That's what it meant for them. Maybe it was the exoteric, is, is what they're telling people, right? With the whole representing Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. But anyway, you've got Louis XIV, right? Who was raised as a Jesuit since a kid, King of France, right? He launches a, just unleashes his fury on Protestants viciously. And now you've got, um, let's see, you've got a vicious campaign yet again, torturing and destroying these Christians or these Protestants, right? Because the Catholic Church is a whole nother thing. They worship Saturn over there. They're, it's a pagan cult, but I'm going to try not to get sidetracked with that. Obviously, I could spend a lot of time on that. So 1685, you've got hundreds of thousands of people who are fleeing from France. And anybody who stays gets tortured. It's, it's all bad, right? And then at some point, you've got everyone, like all the citizens, even people who are now, and this is after probably 80, 90 years, you, even people that are now in government start recognizing what these Jesuits are doing. They recognize that they've usurped their country right? And they start to systematically route out the Jesuits from like 1760 to 1770, right? And you've got Pope Clement the 13th, right? Who, again, was sympathizing with the Jesuits. He's the Pope, right? But the people around him started putting hella pressure on him to denounce the Jesuits, right? And he finally denounces them and uh, denounces them whatever the hell that means in, in actuality. I know what it means, but 1762, he does that, okay? So 1768, um, you've got the Pope reluctantly calling together this secret meeting of people to finally suppress these Jesuits. And he has this meeting called, and the night before that meeting, he mysteriously dies, right? Which is not shocking, okay? So finally, finally, because I'm going to try to wrap it up here. You've got Clement the 14th, which is the next pope. He goes to reform the Jesuits. And that's a red flag for me. He goes to reform the Jesuits first, right? And he finally abolishes the Jesuits in 1773, okay? So to 
to me, that's a controlled burn. It's like what we're seeing now with the um, with this casted hero president that we have who's going to destroy the deep state. That way the deep state can continue on with the illusion that it's been destroyed. It's going to be the same old puppeteers, right? Same tricks been going on forever. Our president, by the way, is a Jesuit. So that's actually an interesting comparison, to be honest. But anyway, if you watch, I'm not going to go all the way in on the Illuminati again. If you watch my Illuminati video, I show how they they raised some dude named Adam Weishaupt since he was seven years old in the Jesuits, right? After these Jesuits were disbanded in 1773, they had Adam Weishaupt create the Illuminati, and he went to all these powerful ex-Jesuits and said, I will give you your positions back and your power back if you join this Illuminati. That's the public version of it. So obviously this was all being worked out, right? And then you have the reassertion and continuation of the power structure of the Jesuits continued on in the form of Illuminati. And they would end up getting the lodges banned and all that, but it's too late. They already illuminated the Freemason lodges and consolidated them. So who's the Illuminati now? Who was the Rosicrucians and who was later on the Martinist? Right? You got to look into these things. But... I'm going to try to wrap it up with that because, again, if you watch my Illuminati video, you'll see that this is just the beginning. The Pope abolishing the Jesuits in 1773 obviously wasn't the end. I was keeping this video just about the origins, and that's exactly what I did. Fast forward all the way to 2020, and we still got Jesuits. And we have one leading America, and it's going to do another fake draining of the swamp. Okay? It's exactly what it is. If you think this dude is draining the swamp, study history. You know, go check this stuff out. See if I'm wrong. The same old stuff, you guys. It takes, this is where power comes from. It's cults. It's secret societies. This is just fundamentally where power comes from. People don't just randomly go do things. There isn't just randomly a Bolshevik revolution or randomly a peasant's rebellion. It's not how it goes. There wasn't just randomly a Boston Tea Party. There wasn't just randomly an American Revolution. Where you have to have organization, you have to have initiates, adepts, people who are bonded together in some way. People who have goals, missions. You, you don't plan something if you don't have goals. This is how it works, y'all. But anyway, I could go on forever about that. I'll, I'll cap it off at that. So thank you guys for checking it out. Um, I'm now, <laughs> of course, 33 minutes into this. And I don't care about none of that. So I'm not a Kabbalist and I'm not into all that number stuff. By the way, who are the Gnostics? <laughs> Sorry, I could go on forever. But this has been about the Jesuits and their origins and that old occult serpent. Thank you guys. I'm going to try to... Um, do some videos more often and not take so dang long to come up with another one. Thank you very much.